Okay, let's take the derivative of a rational function. So we have a fraction. <clears throat> We're going to be dealing with the quotient rule in this one. So let's go ahead and label it. As our quotient rule, as stated over on the right-hand side, looks like we have f as our numerator and g is gonna be our denominator. So to take the derivative, we're gonna take the derivative of f, multiply it by g, just copy that down, subtract away, copy down f, multiply by the derivative of g, the denominator, and then the denominator squared after. So to get going on this, I'm gonna kind of label this as f and g. So we're looking at the right thing as we set this up. Kind of ignore that the function name is also f, um, f of x on the left-hand side. So as we take the derivative here, what we wanna do is Go ahead and first take the derivative of f. So the derivative of f, where you have a linear function going on, one minus five x is just gonna be minus five. So that's the derivative of f multiplied by, we copy down g, one plus five x. Subtract away, we copy down f. So one minus five x. And then we take the derivative of g, so the denominator there, uh, the derivative of one is zero. And then we have the derivative of five x is just gonna be five. And then this is all over the derivative squared. So one plus five x raised to the second power. Now we can clean up this numerator a little bit um, by doing a little bit of distributing and combining like terms. So let's go ahead and distribute that negative five to each one of those terms, so negative five times one is negative five, negative five times five X is gonna be minus 25 X. And then for this second part, I'm gonna think of this five as being out in front. So it's gonna be a negative five that's gonna get distributed. So we can do this all in one step. Um, so negative five times one is minus five. And then negative five times negative five X is gonna be plus 25 X as we distribute there all over one plus five X quantity squared. Um, we can also reduce down a little bit more that we have these like terms in the numerator as we have negative 25 X plus 25 X's, those will create zero X's. So we can leave that part off. And then we can have negative five minus five more makes negative 10 all over one plus five X quantity squared. All right, our next step is we want to go ahead and fill in and evaluate the first derivative that we just found at an X value of one. So we take our one and we plug it in for the X. And then simplifying down here, we have one plus five times one, which is gonna be six to the second power. So negative 10 over six squared is 36. And that's a nice exact answer for us. Um, as you get looking at this, we could reduce down, I suppose, and make this, these are both multiples of two. So we could say negative five over 18, which is an approximation of about 0 0.2. And I guess it's seven repeating. So we'll use our bar over the seven. Um, and that would be an exact answer with the bar. Or we could leave it as a fraction. Um, that's also a nice exact answer. Now to take the second derivative here, we could use the quotient rule again or because ours kind of reduced down nicely in the numerator, we can actually rewrite this and think negative 10 times one plus five X to the negative second power. Um, why I'd wanna do this is I can use my chain rule as opposed to getting the quotient rule out again. Um, and it's gonna be a little bit easier to simply use the chain rule. So in taking the second derivative, our negative 10 can come along and then because that's a constant out in front and using the chain rule, our negative two will come down from the exponent. We'll copy down everything that's inside and we'll reduce the exponent by one. So that's negative two minus one more makes negative three for our new exponent. And then we're gonna multiply that by the derivative of the inner function. And the inner function here is one plus five X. So again, that derivative is just gonna be five. We have multiple constants we can multiply together. So we have negative 10 times negative two times positive five. Overall, that's gonna give us 100. And then our one plus five X raised to the negative third power. If you like seeing this as a fraction, we could again move that back to the denominator and make it a positive exponent. 
Either one of these last two versions, either with the negative exponent or written as a fraction should both be perfectly fine. All right, the last thing we're gonna do on this video is we're gonna evaluate the second derivative at an X value of one. So as we do that, we're just gonna plug one in for our X. And then simplify down, we have 100 over, that'll make six cubed. And six cubed works out to be 216, which I believe are both multiples of four. So we can say 25 over 54, which is approximately or actually equal to 0 0.4629 repeating. Uh, the bar meaning the 629 repeats all three of those digits over and over again. All right, some other things you can glean from this are when we took the first derivative and we plugged in a one, we got a positive value coming out there. Oh, I'm sorry, that should be a negative 0 0.2 and then the seven repeating, just like it was a negative 5 18 Because that's a negative, what that tells us about our graph is it is decreasing at an X value of one. When we plugged into the second derivative, we got um, a positive 0 0.4629 repeating. Because that's positive, that indicates that our graph is gonna be concave up at an X value of one. All right, hope this helps. Good luck to you on this. I think I'm going to make another video showing how to deal with a rational function such as this without using the quotient rule, but writing with a negative exponent. All right, good luck to you.